Welcome to the third loop tutorial. Today I'll focus on various shortcuts and old army tricks you can use to analyze your text data in helpful ways. Now I learned about old army tricks from my father who was a pilot in World War II. He was an inventive guy who was always coming up with little tricks to make his planes function more effectively. Now when I was growing up he constantly came up with what he called old army tricks to do such things as pulling stuck bread out of a toaster with a nail or using duct tape to make a hat. Don't even ask. So the old army tricks we'll talk about today fall into four topics. Categories and categorization of words, segmenting, using dictionaries, and a smattering of other tools. Let's begin our word snooping with a famous text file. This is the ransom note from the John Benet Ramsey kidnapping that occurred in 1996. Six-year-old John Benet had disappeared and this note was left behind. You might pause the video and read the note. It's haunting, even more so because her body was found in the house about eight hours after the parents notified authorities. Now assume that we want to get a better sense of the language of the kidnapping note. We'll start by analyzing it using loop. Open loop, click on the document with the file with the ransom note, and the loop results will pop up. And here you see all the loop output variables you've seen before. But let's begin by digging a little deeper. We'll begin by looking at the category categorizing tool within the loop program. Let's explore the loop categories of language dimensions. Go back to loop and scroll over to the options tab and click on categories. What you see are all the categories that Luke analyzes. At the top are number of summary dimensions, below are the specific word dimensions, including function words, pronouns, and articles, and below that are other grammatical dimensions, emotion words, social categories, and so forth. Now imagine that you wanted to know how each word within the kidnapping note was categorized by Luke. Here's how you do it. Go to the File tab, click on the Categorize Words, then identify the file you want to analyze, and then here are the results. Along the top are all the word categories, and down the first column are all the words of the note. Mr. Ramsey, listen carefully, we're a group of individuals, etc. You will see that there is an X in each word-related cell that corresponds to each word in the note. Now let's look at another visualization of the word categories by clicking on color code text. You are now about to look at the entire ransom note, and you will see that every word that Luke counted is in red. In fact, only a small number of words are not counted by Luke. In this case, the color-coded option isn't too helpful. But here's another approach. Let's go back to the Categories option, but this time I'll click on the, selected, the Select None option at the bottom. All the check marks disappear. I now want to just look at personal pronouns in the text. Click OK, then we will repeat the process. Okay, once we get into the file and analyze it, you can look at the file and identify every personal pronoun used by the author. You'll see here lots of we and you in the first paragraph and almost all use after that. The categories options help you to understand how Luke is counting words. I love using the color coding when I'm trying to link the numbers I see from Luke with what might be going on in the heads of the people I'm studying. Okay. Let's move on to the next old army trick, segmenting. Sometimes it's helpful to see how a text unfolds over time. Let's look at the 1800-page manifesto of the 32-year-old man who murdered 77 in Norway in 2011. I only want to look at a small number of categories, and to do this I'll go to the Categories menu, uncheck all the variables, and then just check a few of my favorites. Word count, analytic thinking, use of I and we words, and emotion categories. Now I click on the file of the manifesto, which takes longer than usual to analyze because of its size. And after the results appear, I'll open it in Excel. And that way you'll be able to see the numbers better. The manifesto has 740,000 words, very low rates of is I and we words and relatively low emotion words, except for anger words. This gives me an overview of the person's thinking, but I'm more curious to see how his writing and thinking unfolded over time. To do this, I go to the options and click on segment. In the menu, I click on the second option that allows me to set the number of segments. I've chosen 20. 
click OK, open the text file again, and wait for the results. Again, I'll open them in Excel. Here are the 20 seconds of the segments of the manifesto arranged from the beginning to the final section, with each section being about 37,000 words. The first column captures analytic, logical, or formal thinking. And look what happens to his numbers in analytic thinking in his final chapter. These lower numbers could reflect more disorganized thinking. Now look at I words, words like me, I, and mine, and note how they shoot up at the end, often a sign of depression or even psychotic thinking. Indeed, the killer was later diagnosed as a paranoid schizophrenic. Finally, his positive emotion words also increased at the end, just before going on his rampage. We see similar patterns in people who are suicidal. You can see how segmenting text can give us a different kind of picture. Now let's go back to the segmentation page. I just want to point out that you can segment text in all sorts of ways. You can specify how many words you would like in each segment. You can define a particular character to break the text, such as a colon or semicolon. You can even segment text by hard breaks between lines. Okay, let's go on to our next topic, which is dictionaries. This section will be brief since the next tutorial will discuss dictionaries in greater detail. Let's start by looking at the dictionary menu. Click on the dictionary details at the top and you see what dictionary is currently loaded. You can also see that the default dictionary is the Luke 2015 dictionary, which is also listed here. And now, when I clicked on the older Luke 2007 dictionary, that information changes on the page. And now I want to load a new dictionary that I made that counts color words. Click on it and open the button and the message indicates I've succeeded. Now look at the settings. Yes, the color dictionary is loaded, but wait! I still have 20 segments in place from the earlier Luke demonstration. Better change this. Back to the Categories menu. First I'll get rid of the punctuation marks, and as you see below, the various color categories are listed. Back to the Segment menu, and click on the Don't Segment button. And now I want to run my color dictionary on files that might mention colors. How about the language of famous poets? I just happen to have a file of poems by poets who either committed suicide or those who didn't, and now I'll, bring it, I'll run it and bring it into Excel. What I've done is to split the files into suicidal averages, and they'll be on top, and the non-suicidal ones are below. And if you look at that, counter to my predictions, the suicidal poets used more color. They used yellow, green, and red at higher rates, whereas the non-suicidal poets used more black. I love this business. We're going to do the last set of other tools, and this is going to be very brief. The first is looking at settings. And so what I've done is to click on settings, and there are a few things that are important here. All of your, the default for processing text is a encoding which is called UTF-8. If you use standard English text, document files, or things like that, this is what you'll use. Should you be using other types of language, Chinese, Korean, or something like this, you will change this. My recommendation is don't mess with it unless you click on this link about clicking on, on other supported encodings. Luke comes set up for United States. If you are in Europe, you would want to switch this as well. That will have relevance for CSV files if they're going to be comma delimited versus period delimited, etc. Okay, the second thing. In terms of help, if you ever need to know basically what version you're using, the serial number that you have, and also how to cite this in the literature, here it is. Okay. And finally, if you want to get help with Luke, what this does is take you online to the Luke page that you've seen before. And the primary thing that I would recommend is use the operator's manual here. Just click on that, and it'll take you to the operator's manual. And if you want the psychometrics of Luke, click on this. All right, you're ready. You have all the, the tools you will need to get by in life, and certainly with Luke. If you have any questions, let us know. Otherwise, see you next time.